During the last ETS Bytes Back, we considered start of mission, and that was section 5.4 of chapter 5, the procedures. We're now going to move on, logically, to look at end of mission, which is section 5.5. But before we start looking at what end of mission is about, we need to be clear what is a mission. And we're lucky that subset 23, the glossary of terms, explains it quite clearly. An ETCS mission is regarded as any train movement started under the supervision of an ERTMS onboard equipment in one of the following modes, and it then lists the modes. We have FS, full supervision, LS, limited supervision, SR, staff responsible, OS, on site, NL, non-leading, UN, unfitted, and SN, system national. And the mission is ended when you transition from one of those modes into SB, standby, or FH, shunt. And if we go for some more detail in Chapter 5, we find that there are two clauses which are very clear about what uh, is regarded as an end of mission. First clause is regarding going into standby, and the second into shunt. Now, if you're observant, you'll notice that the first clause has got nine modes instead of the seven which were in the definition. Post-trip and RV reversing have been added. Sorry. Yes, that's correct. Um, and, and the reason is that if you go back to the definition, you'll see that it is about starting in one of the modes. If you subsequently change to a different mode, that doesn't necessarily end the mission. So you may start in FS and then trip and end up in post-trip. Or you may start in FS and reach a location where there is a hazard and be authorized to switch to RV. The switch to post-trip and RV is not regarded as an end of mission. For shunting, there are a lower list of modes because shunt is not available if you're in some of the modes listed in subset 23. So what happens when end of mission is detected and occurs? Well, the first thing is that onboard deletes any information around an authority that it was previously using. And this is all detailed in Chapter 4, where we'll find there is a long table that lists the information which is unchanged, U, or deleted, <coughs> D, when entering a particular mode. And we're interested in the second column, SB. And as you can see, a large amount of the information associated with movement authorities is deleted. It is no longer relevant and you'll need to start another mission. If there is no communication session in place, then that is the end of the procedure. No more takes place and the train is now in SB or SH as appropriate. However, if a communication exists, <clears throat> then the RBC needs to be notified and the session needs to be terminated. So the onboard will report end of mission using the end of mission message. That message includes a position report, so the RBC can, if it wishes, keep track of where trains were when they reported end of mission. The RBC requests the termination of the session and the onboard terminates the session. It is quite a simple process described in Chapter 3 for termination of sessions. So is there anything we need to think about in degraded situations? Well, perhaps the one that might be relevant is if the train is in staff responsible, but hasn't got a communication session, of course, that could be the reason why it is in staff responsible, then it will not establish a communication session to report end of mission. So if you have a system uh, previously known as level three, where you were reliant on the position report and the uh, integrity of the train, then in that situation where a train has been moving in SR without a communication session, it won't report a position. Its position will be unknown to the RBC. So that is end of mission. <laughs>